today. So, Robert, can you tell the people watching what you do for a business? Well, starting in 1986, we were doing pure graphic design, anything for print from business cards to exhibition stands and all stops in between. Mm -hmm. Um, then about 20 years ago, we saw this thing called the internet and we thought we'd better get involved with that. And we've been building websites for the last 20 years. We've been hosting them as well for the last 15. We're currently hosting something over 400 sites. And uh, we can build sites in any world language um, as we can also do graphic design in any world language. As we were saying earlier, Nigel, just finished a questionnaire for a London data agency in 49 different world languages. A mixture of all sorts, the difficult ones, are the ones that go the wrong way across the page, like Hebrew and Arabic. But most of them are pretty straightforward these days, even Chinese. I know someone who writes like that. Um, <laughs> so, so you started off with graphic design. Yes. Um, and then you say the internet came along. What was it about the internet that kind of caught that inspired you to kind of get into the world of web design? Well, firstly, we could see that that was the way things were going to go. Secondly, websites in the early days looked um, not very attractive, shall we say. Oh, so, yeah. So coming into website design from a graphic design background, even back then when there were pretty low bandwidths, we could at least make sites look interesting, attractive and inviting to the yeah. people that were coming to them. Yeah. And yes, we've basically moved forward from there, De designing for the web has its own challenges. You've got to design in a way which is flexible, which will adjust to screen sizes, work on all different uh, devices. It's interesting, it's a challenge. Every site is different. Um, it keeps us fresh. We're always keeping current with new technology and we absolutely love helping people get the best from their websites. Fantastic. So did you, um, did you kind of do it? Did you like teach yourself HTML? Did you do a course or? Um, over the years, in the early years, yes, we, we had to learn the programming languages. Um, we've kept current with all of them as uh, the internet has evolved, but everything still basically has to sit on top of HTML, which is a brilliantly yeah. simple language, yeah. which works on any system, any device, a wonderful piece of software. Yeah. Um, these days, we largely build in WordPress. Yeah. Reason for that is that to hand code a site can cost five to 10 times more than using a piece of software like WordPress. Yeah. And to be perfectly honest, for 99 out of 100 sites, possibly even 999 out of 1000, there's no reason to not use WordPress. It's yeah. solid, it stays current, it's not going anywhere, it's flexible, the designs are completely free within it. It is a glorious piece of software. Hallelujah. I agree with you on that one, sir. Absolutely. So um, I would imagine, because obviously you, you've been on the internet since the early days, so you remember this noise. Yeah. Oh, yes, the jolly old... Yeah, the jolly old 75 slash 300 modem. And, and the screen would load like that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. I suppose with the advent of broadband and faster speeds, I, I imagine that was kind of like milk for you milk and honey to you guys when you realize that hey we can really start putting some some detail into the the, the the graphics that we create for people yes you can design from a designer's point of view rather than having to adjust the design to the speed of the internet so yes now these days you can build the site exactly the way you want it to to look yeah there are new technologies coming along all the time that make images load faster we're yeah. seeing web web p now which is um a very much smaller file size than even a jpeg and it, wow and it's better quality i was gonna say to you you know png or jpeg and now you're saying web web p a web p file is probably 50 to 60 percent smaller for the same image quality as a jpeg and wow. probably 90 percent smaller than a png 
That's fantastic. That means your your sites will be loading like super super quick. Absolutely, and they and a WebP has the same facilities as PMP as PNG for transparency. It's it, it's a glorious new file format that really lets you be as graphic heavy as you like on a site without slowing down the page loading, which is critical. So um, for the people watching, because we're now talking in code, <laughs> uh, PNG means portable network graphic. This is correct. Uh, JPEG, what's JPEG mean? Joint Photographic Experts Group. Boom! Uh, so that's <laughs> what it means. I know you're no clearer now. I've told you what they mean. But, uh, just for those a... people who are thinking, oh, they're talking in code. I'm switching off. Um, <laughs> Robert, I would imagine um, with the business, there has been you know, a lot of challenges. Could you give us one or two that you've had to overcome? Well, certainly over the last 18 months, um, Probably we've had less challenges than most because doing what we do, um, we're already used to working on screens, working remotely with people using screen sharing. Uh, and we've always been able to work with people um, anywhere in the world. In fact, our two largest clients are oddly based in Naples in Florida and in Quebec. And distance is not a problem these days. You can you can chat like we are now, you can share screens, you can talk things through. I and mean, if, if we've had a challenge, um, we've always worked in an office for the last thir 35 years. The four of us in the team actually gave our office up about a year ago because the lease was up, we couldn't go into it. It wasn't a shop front. We didn't lose anything and so we've all been working remotely um it hasn't really impacted what we do we can leave zoom open we can leave a chat open all the time it's been hardest for for our trainee because you really need to be sitting on a trainee's shoulder yeah. looking yeah. over the shoulder showing yeah. them things yeah and certainly since lockdowns eased um she's been coming round to our house and to one of the other members of the team's houses so we can get back into that a bit yeah 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 but no if if there's been any change in what we do for the last year since lockdown began almost everything we did was helping existing clients adapt yeah. their sites to the yeah. new situation yeah yeah recently we're seeing a lot more new business coming along again and we've been doing a lot of networking as well to keep ourselves out there yeah yeah but it is true that uh, I think I think we are seeing a resurgence in confidence. There's a lot of new businesses starting up. We're being asked to build a lot of new sites. And as the saying goes, when the tide comes in, it floats all of the boats. So hopefully that's good for everybody. Uh, Fantastic. I like that. When the tide comes in, it floats all the boats. Well, that's an the boats. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, um, Robert, my favourite question, actually, this is, uh, tell us one thing about you that not many people know. Oh, dear. I did my first bungee jump when I was 59. How about that? Is that the picture on your Facebook? It is, yes. Oh, my God. You look like you're flying. It's actually a fantastic picture because you can put that anywhere and it's like, super, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> showed off the stomach a bit but there you go oh wow what, what was it for charity was it it was I, we'd actually gone along to to watch some of our son's friends doing it oh and i was sitting there and i, I watched them doing it and i said oh, i could do that and so it cost 50 pound and suddenly there were 10 five pound notes in front of me i thought i'm gonna to have to do this now <laughs> robert you're, you're you're supposed to lead by example you're, i mean how do you volunteer for them things <laughs> <laughs> Fair play though. I mean, the thing is, as we know, based on what we've just been through, you have one life. So you know, do whatever you can to yeah, kind of I'll, have that have that experience and have that memory. You know, it's complete. And sense. I didn't lose it doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you have flashbacks. Wake up! Oh, I'm falling. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Robert, if somebody was crazy enough right now to want to start a business, I say crazy. No adventures. No, not crazy. Excited. At all. excited um brave is the word i'm looking for um what advice would you give them to make sure they got off to the best possible um start with that business you you've got to know your skills and you've got to know your market yep you've got to 
have looked at your finances and made sure that you're going to be able to get through those first six months and nine months, one year. So many businesses fail in the first year yeah. because people haven't planned properly for what they're going to do. So I would say, yeah, you've, you've got to be confident in your abilities and what you're putting out there. You've got to know where you're going to market it and you've got to have a bit of finances behind you to enable you to do what you need to do. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Um, and is there anything that the people watching can do to help you right now, sir? Well, um, I've often said WWW stands for Wild West Web Design. It's an unregulated business there's a lot of cowboys out there there's also a lot of very good people doing very very good work yeah but web design is a bit of a dark art for a lot of people they don't fully understand it and therefore it's easy to not not necessarily be conned but if you don't know the right questions to ask and if you don't know the questions that a web designer should be asking you you're not going to know if you're getting a good deal or not. Yeah, yeah. Now, about a year ago, we put a series of articles up on LinkedIn, yeah. listing the kind of questions that a web designer should be asking you and the kind of questions that you should be asking a web designer. Yeah. We've got a lot of good feedback from that. People have found it very useful. Are you able to share that to the comments um, when we finish? Maybe share the link. I can try. It's actually on my LinkedIn page. Um, if can you can you link can you can you link straight to the article? I will see if I can. Yeah, I'm if you sure. can, that, that that'd be good because I, I mean it's it's something I come across quite a lot um, with people and their lack of kind of what they should be getting from a website. I mean, I've had people spend two thousand pounds on a website, mm -hmm. and the web designer hasn't even bothered to give the um, the, the home page any kind of meta tag. Um, and then yeah. you're working through it and there's no optimization. The images are all called 176475JPEG. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's because people don't know. They just say, well, I want a website. It's got to look like this. I'm selling this. And the web designer goes, ooh. Yeah. But if the web designer isn't someone who does optimization, they're not going to do that. It's it. I mean, I've often said a website sits, is a stall with three legs. It's got to have good design. It's got to have good content. And it's got to have good search engine optimization. If any yeah. of those legs isn't there, the site's going to fall over. It'll yeah. still be there, but it won't yeah. be doing its job. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of work that we do is trying to win people's confidence back and helping them get existing sites. Yeah. Yeah. Properly. yeah. Yeah. Because you do get that a lot where people have had a site, they're not happy with it. They come to you, they're already kind of negative about working with another web developer. Um, yeah. And then you've got to kind of educate them as to, you know, if you did come on board, this is the things. You know, when I speak to, to, to clients or potential clients, I always kind of tell them what they should do or what they should consider yeah. doing. And then I leave it to them whether they work with me or not. Yeah. Um, mm. Because ultimately, if you've got the knowledge, you're you're more powerful than when you didn't have the knowledge. Uh, yeah. And then it's down to you where you spend your money and you ask the right questions. Absolutely. But, uh, I mean, fantastic. A, web, a, a website is a brilliant tool. It's a 24-7, 365 salesperson that's working for you all the time. And it should be bringing you warm referrals from people who've gone to your site, yep. seen what you're offering, they're yep. interested, and they contact you. Boom. If, that, if that's not happening, the site ain't right. And it if, that, if, that, if that's not happening, guys, get in touch with Robert, then he will put things right. <laughs> what we love doing oh fantastic so robert if you could make sure that you uh, drop the link to that article in the comments as well and if you've got any special offers at the moment for anyone who's looking for a website free hosting whatever whatever yeah we drop always get as well. free hosting yeah with, brilliant. with any new with any new site build brilliant. Um, brilliant well people thank you so much for watching thank you for joining us today if you want to reach out to robert um click on his beautiful face um his beautiful picture of him bungee jumping on um, Facebook and then you'll be straight within his ecosystem and uh, I'm sure Robert will be happy to answer any questions that you Absolutely. have Always about web or graphic design or web P which I still don't kind of understand but hey <laughs> <laughs> right we're going guys have a fantastic day Robert don't go anywhere we'll have a debrief and yes, uh, thank you Lovely so much chat. no mm. problem thank you for joining me today people have a fantastic rest of the week and I shall speak to you all Later on this week. Aha, to the pip. <laughs>